Blessed be the name of the Lord. Peace of the Lord Jesus to the entire church, the ones who are present and the ones also who are following us on the internet. And it is with great joy that I invite the brethren to open the word of the Lord and the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 7. Our reading is going to begin in verse 36. We're going to read and then a couple of other, other ver verses until the end of the of this chapter. Blessed be the Lord because you brought us and we, we already knew that we had a banquet prepared and we, was we were already in joy of His presence through the praises. The presence of the Lord is real, is abundant in our midst because of His infinite mercy. Not because we deserve it. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. In the presence of the Lord does good things to our soul. Amen. The text of Luke 7.36 says the following. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went on the Pharisee's home and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now verse 44. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, You see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her uh, tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this one has not ceased to kiss me with uh, my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint me my head with oil. Now verse 48. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgot, forgiven. And those who, were, who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Saved you. Go in peace. Lord, your word has been read, and your word is alive and its power and living bread that comes down from heaven. We praise you and ask, Lord, Remove any barrier from our, from our mind and our heart, everything that by any chance may distance us from your project, for your, of your purpose for us tonight, because we know that you desire to speak with us. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. The church may be seated. The brethren have already stopped to analyze that... As time passes, the, the time of the, the coming of the Lord Jesus is coming near, the time of a time called soon, the time in which we're living. So in, at any moment, we're going to depart through the rapture eve, or in, if we pass away and the Lord take us to be with him. And have you noticed that as time passes, we're closer to the return of the Lord Jesus in the world out there, there is a greater confusion of thinking, of mind. We have, re have received recently a period of pandemic, and the period of pandemic brought great confusion that caused people to make a definition. Many made a definition to, uh, to the world, sadly. But there is a people that has made a definition to salvation. There is a people that said, I want life, I want the blessing. And I place before you the blessing and curse, the life and death. And the advice comes soon after. Choose, therefore, life so that you can live. And my brethren, the world and this confusion goes errant, confused, and normally there are people that may come in be becoming close to the path of salvation, still send an invitation, that, an, an advice that caused people to go straight for, uh, from the path of eternity. 
and even religions today, because they try to understand the thing, spiritual things through human reason, through science, or even through their intellect. And when Jesus, the, the period in which he stayed on earth, he operated in many signs, miracles, and wonders. We are going to mention a couple of them here so that we know, so that we don't take too long here. In the lack of wisdom, Peter asked him, the master pays taxes. We sometimes criticize Peter, but many times we are just like Peter. And then Peter answers, pay, pay, pay. Of course he pays. So then goes and go and receive the tax. And he comes to the Lord and he answered, oh. And he said that you were supposed to pay tax. And I said, I would. And Jesus told, told Peter, I'm the son of God. How can I pay tax? But so that you are not ashamed, go and fish. And as soon as you open up uh, the belly of the fish, you find what you're waiting for. See how the Lord is merciful. He found a coin inside of the fish. Peter goes, find the coin inside of the mouth of the fish, and goes there and pays the tax. So then they asked Peter, the ones who asked, and Peter at that moment did not understand. Uh, Jesus came to speak about a kingdom that was not of this world. It was not related to Caesar. It was not related to the Roman laws. Uh, or none of it. My kingdom is not, is not of this world. Isn't it what he said? And we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Why is that? Because we assimilated this kingdom. When we accepted Jesus, our only and sufficient Savior, things cannot be interpre interpreted this way. Jesus goes up to bring a sermon. The sermon uh, is lengthy, and then disciples say, Lord, Lord, you see, it's, it's very late. There's no business here. But if they, even if he had, well, we don't have money to feed these people. Let these people go. The idea was good, according to human logic. It was a very, uh, Jesus delayed too much in his message, and these people had to walk to, to the city to eat. But their human reason was, was prevailing there. And then Jesus said, give them what to eat. But the disciples said, Lord, how can we give food? But in the middle, there, were, there was a young man with five fish, uh, five bread and two fish. And Jesus looks, looks, at, the, looks at it, goes to heaven, looks to heaven and thank the Lord. And they began to distribute that, the fish and the bread. Thousands of people were fed. You can imagine the number of, of uh, men, women, and children that ate the first sandwich of bread and fish. Blessed be the Lord. And the Bible says that there were still 12 baskets filled left over. Like if for each one of the apostles, you do you work with me? Here's your blessing. There are 12 baskets like for the 12 apostles. But then on the following day, they returned. They, they thought, well, today there was bread and fish. Maybe tomorrow there's a lasagna, stroganoff. He's the son of God. He took five bread and two fish and he multiplied but then when they come Jesus said who does not eat of my flesh or drink of my blood it does not does not have anything to do with me and they said oh this this message is too morbid eat of my flesh and drink of my, my blood they still uh, had were, were judging his message with human reason they returned to see another miracle and the crowd did not understand and when Jesus multiplied the bread and fish he was speaking about his kingdom he was prophetically speaking about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit the abundance of God has as a prophetic plan of salvation for the life of man and the continuation of the sermon the following day was whoever does not drink of my uh, blood and eat of my flesh cannot have anything to do with, with me was speaking about the previous message the previous day. Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He's speaking about uh, walking uh, on the path that Jesus laid out. Come and follow me. But that the Bible says that everybody left angry, upset. Many left upset. And Jesus said, how about you? Do you want to leave as well? 
asked the disciples. And and that's the answer from the disciple was, where are we going to go? You are the one who has words of eternal life. And when he healed the the, the sick and raised the dead and everything there was an explanation there was an arrow pointing to prophecy this is what I want to do for you this is what I do for men and your word about being delivered from the yoke of Rome or paying tax, taxes to Rome I worried about this the kingdom that I have prepared for you is much better the house that has been prepared for you, a special house, we are going to live there eternally forever with me. This is the message of Jesus. And now we see here in this text an event, a practical. The Holy Spirit has shown that there is going to be clarity to many hearts who entered here tonight. If not for everyone, if all we want, we are going to leave this place loving the Lord more and, and understand this project better. Jesus was invited to eat in the house of a Pharisee. The Pharisees, a man, they were great, had great knowledge of the, the Torah, of the, the law of the time, but only they knew only the latter. The expression the Bible uses regarding this, they are like a painted tomb. You see, when you go to a cemetery, you see, they paint, paint white the tombs to look nice, but what is inside? Rotting things. Uh, the painted tomb look, speaks about a person that only worries about their own external appearance, but they have inside all the ugly things of this world. And Jesus uses this expressions, expression as an alert because the Pharisees, they, only, they were only worried about the law. A woman was caught on, on the act of sin and the Pharisees were saying oh, we need to stone this woman because she was caught sinning and Jesus began to write on the, the floor, on the ground and, and the Pharisees came and said this is the situation Jesus' Jesus's answer was the most beautiful answer it came from eternity whoever does not have, have any sin throw the first stone and they began releasing the stones to the ground no, but nothing else was heard, only but the sound of the stone falling to the ground. And Jesus looked with the gaze of love in the same way that he looks at us with compassion, saying to us, I love you, I want to give you an eternal life where there is not going to be crying or grinding of teeth or going to dry out all tears from your eyes. And he tells this woman, where are your accusers? And she said, they have all left. And then Jesus explained to her what salvation is, what is a living in true gospel. And, uh, and he said, I do not condemn you. She was repentant. And then he said, go and see no more. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the gospel that Jesus has left. And the Pharisee here called Jesus for a supper, for a dinner. And uh, was with tradition at the time, the, the host would receive the guest and he would do everything that we read. Somebody came from a long uh, walk, the visitor, and he had uh, dust on his feet and his hair was full of dust. His skin was all dried. And it was traditional, the same way as a person from Minas in Brazil. There's always coffee and cheese. It's not part of our culture. And the person from, from Rio does something, that, something else different. And people from Bahia in Brazil does something else as well. And each culture has something. And there they had a, 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 a vessel of water to wash their feet. Here's the water, wash your feet. And there would be oil and apply upon the hair of the person. Why is that? Because they came from a desertic region. And there the wind, the, the wind storms, the sand storms probably had entangled their hair. And then they applied the oil to to straighten up the hair and make it make them smelling good and in all detail they used to kiss the holy kiss so when someone arrived the host of the house would kiss the, the cheek of the guest showing a love and care and this Simon had not done any of it 
and it was uh, it is true that it was a tradition because when Jesus resurrected Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus now resurrected, they celebrate, and then Mary does the same to Jesus, anoint his hair, brings a very expensive perfume, and Judas even said, he's she's wasting this perfume. He could have sold and given to the poor. Of course not. He was not worried about poor. He wanted to pocket that. His heart was filled with evil. His kingdom was of was of this world. And this act of Mary, the Bible said that Jesus said, what she did will be remembered throughout eternity. And today we remember, two, two, more than 2,000 years later, we are making a reference to what Mary did. The same what this woman did. The difference about this woman Mary was a Christian. This woman was not a Christian. The Bible says that she was a sinner. But now we see here clearly also that she was repented. And I like to emphasize here now so that no one leave this place without understanding this. The first step for salvation is repentance. This woman entered in that house. She had not been invited. My brother, she was an unworthy person. She entered no, a party crasher, and she entered here behind Jesus, and she because she, in order for her not to be recognized, she entered behind Jesus. She w had all the humbleness of someone that was completely repentant of her sins. I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy, but I've seen what this man has done. I saw the miracles, and I know that he can change my life. And see the act of this woman. The wholeness of her heart it generated life and salvation for her. And she did exactly what Simon had not done. And uh, as she was doing this, Simon was arguing on his heart and his mind saying, if this man was son of God, he would have known that this woman is a sinner. If this man was a prophet, he would have known this woman could not even enter my house and had done any of, of the things that she does. He just heard He's taught. Do you know that Jesus hears our thoughts? He's the only one that hears. Blessed be the Lord for this. The enemy of our souls does not have this power. Blessed be the Lord for this. Because while it is still in, in thought, we have the condition to repent and resort to the uh, of pleading for the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. I, I thought bad things against my neighbor, my family member. Forgive me, Lord. These thoughts came from my mind. Forgive me, Lord. And the Lord has forgiveness ready to give you. And when Simon thinks about it, and Jesus hears, Jesus uses a very common way of asking to Simon about forgiveness. And he says, and to whom lots of forgiveness is because this person is loved most, somebody owes you a little and you forgive but you don't need to make a big effort but if somebody owes you a lot and you forgive this person then you love this person a lot and Simon understood what Jesus said and Jesus told him Simon I entered your house you did not give me water for my feet you didn't take care of my hair you didn't kiss me and see what this woman did she does not cease to kiss me she brought uh, uh, on oil and she's now taking care of me she's crying, she's washing my feet with her tears my brother and sister, do not leave this place without understanding that this is the gospel this is salvation Jesus is to be at the feet of Jesus with a feeling that we, we without Lord the Lord, we are nothing the, the Lord, we have nothing the Lord is our everything we have found in Jesus in our life. He has changed our lives. He transformed the way we we live. Maybe you entered here tonight and we are asking, how can I do to be like this? The part of this men and women here, they are deserving. They are more important. They are more worthy. What do they do? They take a course in order to, to for for them to be saints? No. No, we are all equal before the Lord. The Lord has already searched your heart tonight. And already seen that he, you have the desire to be part of a people that is going to live in heaven. 
the Lord, this power has already entered in your mind, in your heart, has saw your intention, has seen your intention, in in your desire, and He wants to say that the merit is not yours. None of us here have the merit of salvation. Salvation is something that is given to us by the great mercy of the Lord, by God's grace. By faith, we are saved. By by grace, we are saved by through faith in Christ Jesus. If you believe, today you will be leaving this place here with your name written in the book of life. It's the grace of the Lord. In the same way that this woman entered here, entered there, sinner, now she leaves with this word, your sins have been forgiven. My brethren, there is no better word for us to hear. There is no expression that uh, would be greater. And listen what the Lord is saying to you tonight. Come as you are. Maybe you have an appearance of holiness, but inside you are destroyed. And the Lord wants to restore you. He wants to give new clothing. What kind of clothing? Those are garments of salvation. The Lord wants to give you a dignity that you on your own will never have. or Either through your uh, material resources or intellect or good deeds. You give alms. You help the poor. No. No, it's by gra grace, by salvation Christ Jesus, because you are coming close to Jesus, because you are at God's feet crying, contrite, recognizing, Lord, Lord, I'm pouring out my tears, confessing to you that I'm unworthy, but the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice on the cross, make me worthy and give me access to eternity. Lord, here is my everything. And the Bible says that this vessel of oil that this woman brought, the same that Mary had was very expensive. It's like a month of work, right? It's like a wage of a month. It was very valuable. And the world, the, the religions, they begin, they tend, try to sh uh, use the gospel to bring riches to, to their own lives in, here on earth. And you are before Jesus does not need your money or your resource, but much on the contrary, he wants to open the doors and to tell you, Come as you are, and enter into a path that will lead you to eternity. And as this woman does this, and she's saying, Lord, I give myself to you, I surrender to you. Here I am, this, this perfume that she had was probably everything that she had. And when she left there, she would be poor materially, but she would be living rich spiritually because now her name was written in the book of life. She was sure of her salvation. She anointed it. Jesus is here. So in other words, she was coming closer, trying to understand what was happening in God's mind. We need to seek to understand more what the Lord thinks about us, what God has for me, what God's plans for me. Those are plans of peace, the plans of blessing, plans that are going to lead to eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you God at God's feet? Because at God's feet you understand His walk. Come and follow me. How many times He has said this? Come and follow me. Many times he said this to a young man that was very rich and thought he was rich and that he was saved because he fulfilled all the, his commandments from his youth and he asked, what can I do in order to be saved? And that, he knew he was not saved and Jesus answered, go sell everything that you have and give to the poor and then follow me. And the Bible said that he left with a sad face. He was not happy with that answer and we are here to say that the riches of this life they, they are, uh, and this it's uh, not good no if you work and it, it can be a blessing for you material goods but may it, well, I hope that this is not something you're going to hinder your spiritual life and it is more important is an assurance of eternal life and this woman what this woman did was to say, I want to have an eternal life of God. And she received this blessing because she heard from Jesus saying, your faith saved you. May God bless you. May the Lord have spoken to your heart and my heart and that we may live from a salvation that is humanitarian, as material, as rational, and enter into God's time and understand the true worth and what pleases the Lord. This woman to the this pleased the Lord. That's why she was able to reach eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
instrumentos vão continuar assolando esse louvor enquanto nós transmitimos os dons. O Senhor mostrou nesta noite que há um casal aqui que precisa de uma bênção. A mente está confusa em relação às coisas do, do reino. E é como nós dissemos, você entrou aqui esperando em Jesus para esta vida, mas você vai sair entendendo que a existência, a vinda dEle, a morte dEle, a ressurreição dEle é para te conduzir à eternidade. Porque um dia Ele voltará para nos buscar. Há um óleo do Espírito Santo está sendo derramado sobre este casal nesta hora para trazer o equilíbrio e os pensamentos alinhados com a eternidade. Você que entrou aqui nesta noite, você não entrou em vão. Não foi o homem que te convidou, o homem foi apenas um Vai. Um Man, it was just a vessel, uh, 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 a blessing. But the Holy Spirit brought you here to receive blessing and to bring new garments so that your interior is as pure as your interior as was was showing a garment of salvation. Be holy as I am holy. And tonight the Lord is blessing these people according to the spiritual gift that the Lord has given. The presence of the Lord is filling this place. The spiritual gift is the fruit of the Spirit and He's take advantage of this. Take advantage of blessing because tonight is the night of salvation. Let's stand up and sing the last part of this song. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You who are here tonight before the King of Glory, hail the King Jesus. Kneel down in His presence. Allow your tears and your anguishes. Leave them at His feet. Dry it up with your thoughts. So your, may your thoughts be geared towards eternity. Kiss the Lord tonight. Show your intimacy with the Lord because the Lord loved you, loved you first. I want to hear a voice, I want to hear the feeling of the Lord in, your, in my life. Lord, here I am, I'm nothing, but with you, I'm your servant, I'm saved, and my name is written in the book of life, and I'm going to return it with you. Here's my life, Lord, my vessel, a pure perfume, receive my adoration. I'm pouring out my life in your presence. Confess to the Lord that you, from this moment forward, you are a new creature. Blessed be the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Enjoy the salvation. Take possession of a blessing. Don't leave this place in the same way you entered. Don't leave this place. The feeling that the Lord Jesus told you, go, your faith has saved you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. We praise the Lord for this wonderful day. You know your thoughts, Lord. We are in this world, but do not belong to this world, Lord. We thank you for everything you have done for us. You have given a might of Christ, heart pure and righteous every day. Because we know that we are flawed and sinners, but we are, we are here at your feet, Lord, to be able to. This, every day we want to reach the stature of the perfect servant, but Manneth will be fulfilled, Lord. Yes, we are here, Lord, so that every day you break our lives 
like vessels in the hands of the potter, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for this love that cannot be compared. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Lord, receive our service. So simple, but comes from the bottom of our hearts. Our sincerity in pleasing you and offering you our best. We want to surrender to you all our, all our gratitude. Receive our praise and take us home in peace for night of rest so that tomorrow we can enter into your holy temple so that we can learn more from you and pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church may be seated. Our service is over. We want to give our welcome to in the name of Jesus to you who visit us. Feel at home. It's the shelter of God. You are the sheep of God. See the good care of the shepherd. Uh, heal our wound, feeds you and brings you to calm waters and return more time so that we can together be enjoy of the benefits of this salvation. We're going to now give assistance to wh whoever need. We're going to be going towards you to pray with you, to have a conversation if you desire. And if you want to tell us in the moment of the service that spoke to your heart, in the name of the Lord, will be greatly glorified. If you identified with any part of this service, the praise, the adoration, this, the spiritual gifts that have been shared, and tell us in your, the name of the Lord, will be glorified. And to all the peace of the Lord. And tomorrow at 10.30 is Sunday school. And pay attention to the change of the clock. We're going to go back or, or we're going to go forward one hour. So the hour we won, now we're going to lose. So pay attention. The cell phones, they update automatically, but not the alarm clock. So ask the brethren to pay attention. The peace of the Lord Jesus to everyone.